They stare at it. The centrepiece. A fizzy candelabra. Almost as though they expect it to drink itself. Foster's lemonade top. Generous head. Mick carried it with his own pint in place of cake and candles. Stella Artois, no top, slender head. An age-old tradition for a premature landmark, but of six, but at six foot two with deep blue eyes, Zach looks more than ready. His mum, Claire, can't handle the fact he'll soon be leaving school. No tie to a tree from the banister or synchronised routines. Praise the compass on the beer mat won't send him on a spiral. Dreads the thought that blonde hairs sprout around his nipples. Malbec, if they have it, but house is fine if not. Her brother, Mick, perches down, shoulders stiff as absinthe. For 18 months he's brought these on the sly. Pre-match tension gently soothed by piss water in plastic cups, and in buying Zach his maiden pint, he fills the paternal void. His wife, Sue, sits opposite the jukebox. Gestures at the barman to turn it down. Chunters under her breath whilst the other three are laughing, counts her blessings that her and Mick won't babysit much longer. Lemonade, fresh lime, ice. A drum roll on denim as he reaches out to grasp it, held aloft like the Jules Rimet in 1966. A nod from Mick as he sips, a grin at Mam as he swallows, a wince from Claire as he swigs, a grimace from Sue as he burps. The pint is placed back down, two thirds full already and the fizzy candelabra holds the decades in its dregs. Good evening everybody, my name is Matt Abbott, welcome to this week's Insta Session. This is number 31, so I started this at the beginning of May last year, nobody knew how long it had lasted, and here I am, hurtling towards 50. Um, I'm really excited about tonight's session. Um, tonight's session, um, I'm welcoming if Iftikar Latif um, to the feature slot. Um, Iftikhar is a writer and spoken word artist of British Bangladeshi descent. He released his debut collection of short stories and poems titled Losers in August 2019. His work often refers to the British Asian experience, deconstructions of masculinity and addiction slash isolation. Currently, he is founder and co-host for Off the Chest and I am buzzing to welcome him. So I shall invite him to here we go. Young Ifti. Looking forward to seeing what he shares. Make sure my volume's turned up. Give me a sec. Yeah. Oh, hello. Hello. How you, How doing, you doing, man? Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. You have to I have to apologize for the lighting. My bulb is gone, so I'm sitting next to a really yellow lamp right now. But I think it's it's okay. It's all good. I think you look cool. You look radiant. <laughs> Thank you. I got my uh, black and yellow shirt on to represent, you know, wearing colours. But yeah. Cool. Thank you, mate. Oh, yeah, the branding, of course, I just realised then. I was thinking, what, is he a Borussia Dortmund fan? What? No, no, cool. <laughs> You're one, ten steps ahead of me. Um, thanks for uh, agreeing to do the session, um, for joining us tonight. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, how have you been the last few months? You've been all right? Yeah, I've been good. Um, obviously, it's a bit of a weird time and... Uh, yeah, I've, I've tried to be positive. I think uh, at the beginning of this year, I had a few small goals in my head. And I think that's kind of kept me going, given me some sort of perspective. And I know um, things will get better. So, yeah, I have to admit, I'm a little bit nervous because I haven't performed in a while. Even though I I run off the chest and let other people perform, I myself have not really done much poetry in front of any other people in a long time. Yeah, I hear you, man. It's cool. Don't worry. It's all going to be... <laughs> but no, I, I know because I did a set last night for The Boss, which is a Manchester-based night. And I'm the same as you. I've been hosting tons of events last year, but barely done any as a performer. So mm. but it's all good, man. You'll be fine. Fantastic. Yeah. You, Because um, Ella Dorman Gajic, your co-host, obviously did a session a few weeks back and was singing your praises. Um, yeah. Yeah, I caught a bit of that. I couldn't catch the whole thing, but um, yeah, that was amazing. I've always uh, always had a lot of respect for Ella. Obviously, we work very closely. I think she's here as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, I feel, I feel quite loved already in the chat. Hello to everybody. Hello to all my friends. This is a friendly <laughs> crowd tonight, you know? Yeah, it's good. It's nice to see. So um, Losers, which you published in 2019, that was short stories and poems. Um have you been working on a follow-up? I'm not trying to put you under pressure. 
Yeah, I don't know. I I think uh so when I when I did that book, it was like a really small thing. It was like completely DIY, self-published. Yeah. Um I really to be honest didn't know what I was doing because it was like a bit of a stab in the dark and I think people enjoyed it and I think it was really kind of important for me to really push myself in that direction. Um but I think if in terms of a follow-up, I don't know if I'm going to do anything like that again in in the sense of like the kind of similar themes uh, um yeah. be, just because I'm in such a different place that came out in like uh 2019 based on writings I did in 2018 and I think as a person I've I've grown a lot so maybe something completely different but um who knows yeah. who knows it's, it's like a time capsule isn't it that's you at that stage in your life and I think sometimes obviously like being a poet there's no like set route to take as well in terms of building a body of work so yeah. I guess for you putting it out there no, you, you can only know by putting it out there how you'd feel about it and how to respond to it I suppose you sort of, you've got to take that step haven't you absolutely yeah it was like I don't know what to expect at all when when I put it out and in fact had I not done that a lot of other things wouldn't have been set in motion for me um I think off yeah. the chest for example the venue we had for that was the Highland Cafe in East London um I only formed that relationship with the cafe owners because I did the book launch there. Um yeah. and then they were happy with the po- poetry kind of taking place in the cafe. They're like, "Okay, what's next?" And I'm like, "I don't <laughs> I'm not releasing another book, but maybe we can kind of let other people take the stage, you know, and like do some more poetry." So I think yeah, cool. like it's it's opened a lot of doors for me. I'm really grateful about that. Cool. Yeah, fair play. Fair play. Well, uh, do you fancy sharing a poem? Getting the first one off. off <laughs> Absolutely. I, I think I'm going to start with a bit of a, a silly one. I know um, Valentine's Day is coming up. I, d- I don't know if many people are having any sort of uh, any sort of dates or anything. Maybe a virtual Valentine's date. Um, safe to say I won't be doing that, unfortunately. But it doesn't make much of a difference because I'm quite used to it. But this poem is called Matched. And I think it's quite appropriate for the for Valentine's Day, which is coming up. Cool. Why do they call it Tinder when I get no matches? I'm just looking for a spark. Because the world got dimmer when you left. Love life took a nosedive, free falling, hitting terminal velocity. I'll be honest, I never moved on properly. Rolling solo, hole in my heart like a polo. I go to the cinema on my own. The couple next to me hold each other tight. I hold my pint a beer tighter until my desperation crushes the plastic cup. Sometimes I wonder whether I'm working to live or living to jerk. Pornography leaves you empty, but can a void that's already empty get any emptier? Has anyone else noticed that there are too many couples in the world I'm so used to being a third wheel, I feel like a spare tire. Life's a long, lonely road. It's best not to travel alone. When you hit a pothole and break down, it's worth asking for a tow. Don't ever let anyone tell you that love happens when you least expect it. Because that's like a teacher telling their students that they'll only get an A when they least expect it. But some lessons are learned the hard way, and love is a lesson that's taught lifelong. Where's my tutor? I never learned how to be happy single. The only single I like is a single bed. Can't sleep in a double because there's too much space. Feels too much like there's a place for another person who's not there. My hand reaches out in the middle of the night for someone to hold me back. Maybe one day I'll be able to look back and laugh at how silly I've been. Worrying all for nothing when I wake up to someone who shares that double bed with me and makes fun of couples who sit next to us at the cinema. Someone who makes me smile without me being afraid that if I didn't smile all the time, I'd only cry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank well, you so much. What, what oh. a start. What a start. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, this poem just makes me laugh. I feel like uh, I'm getting a few matches these days. So like looking back on it, I'm like, Chill, bro. Like, it will happen. It will happen. Yeah, but <laughs> it, it can sometimes feel like you're the furthest away from it ever happening, can't you, to be fair? Like, I, I understand. 
Yeah. And even if, you know, it's important to talk about that, even if you have moved on in some way, it's still important to, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's important to kind of capture those moments. I find that with a lot of poems. You write them when you're feeling one way and you look back at it like a snapshot. But, um, yeah, we move. Maybe somebody watching tonight will swipe. Whichever <laughs> way you move the swipe, I don't actually know. but <laughs> Maybe, who knows, who knows. Um, <laughs> so have you written anything... Um, during the lockdown period at all. Again, I'm not trying to put pressure on, I'm just curious. It's like, you know, it's really difficult when you've got a fog over you, but yeah. have you written any you know, poem or two? Yeah, I, I actually have written a few things. Um, I think, like, recently, um, I don't know what it is, but I've been writing a lot about kind of Tupperware and also my parents, who I associate with Tupperware because they love giving me food when I visit them. Um, obviously not so much recently, but still... Um, and yeah, like, I don't know where that's coming from. Um, it's funny how you kind of move from topic to topic, depending on where you're at, at life, but that's yeah. the sort of thing I've been focusing on. Yeah. Interesting. Have you written anything uh, over the last year that's really surprised you that absolutely would not have been in Losers? Oh, um, oh, that's a good question. I, I think, uh, so when I was writing Losers, I actually wrote things quite one-dimensionally. Um, so, for example, it would be stuff that was focused on one theme throughout. And I know, um, looking back on it, I felt like that was probably because of my lack of maturity as a writer at the time. And obviously, yeah. as you kind of grow and get more comfortable with your craft, you're kind of taking on multiple things. You're giving your world a bit more color instead of making it black and white. Um, and I think... The stuff where I say I'm, I'm writing about my parents, I think a lot of that writing is also not just about uh, my parents, but also kind of reflections of myself within, within my parents as they are depicted within the poems. That sort of stuff I don't think would have been in The Losers just because I didn't have that kind of eye with me at the time. But Interesting. Yeah. Cool. That's, that's really exciting to hear. I guess like, and that's another thing with with put, putting something out. It's a there's a certain finality to it, isn't it. It's like right, that's done now. That's out there. Yeah. And so you back. You naturally you have to move on to something different to fill the void. So uh, yeah, interesting. Um, do you fancy sharing another poem? For sure. Um, on the topic of my parents, I'll I'll nice. say a little bit of a longer one about my mum. Um, and I love my mum. Um. So this isn't like me dissing her, but, uh, you know, some things need to be said, you know, and it's a little bit more serious. My mum finds it hard to say sorry, even when it's the only antidote. Even when it's clear that something is wrong, she'll do anything and everything except say that word, as if it's a dirty curse that can't leave her lips. Sometimes I've stayed enraged, wondering just why it's so difficult to her to hear her admit that she's wrong. And I wonder why. Why is it that she can show no weakness when we are all just error-prone humans? I think about my grandparents and whether they, and whether they too had this issue, whether my mum needed them to say that magic word, so desperate to hear a soft voice. Instead, she'd be greeted with, Authority, a strong tone that was unwavering and never showed that it was wrong. In a brown household, the parents are always right. They always know best and you are an extension of them. So when you disobey them, it's as if a limb isn't obeying the orders of the mind. You need to be useful because what use is an arm that doesn't carry out exactly what the mind wants it to but I've sat in front of plates of, fo of food, biryanis, samosas, and all the other golden treats my mum has laboured over to say sorry to me with. Whether, whenever she f has felt bad and wanted to make it up to me, but surely it's easier to say sorry than to show it. I don't want to infer your apology. I want to hear it so I can know that it's okay for me to say sorry too. 
I've lied awake afraid that one day we'll play the usual games of me waiting to see what you'll do to show that you are sorry. But I'll miss all the cues and then it will be too late. And I'll lose you without knowing you were in fact apologizing in your own way. I'm not afraid to say that your delicious food or staunch sense of duty to me is not the same as a verbal apology. I'm a poet, so you should know your words are worth more to me than the greatest dish you could serve. Please don't try and fill my stomach when you could fill my heart. Wow, beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Very powerful. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, I don't know if that's a generational thing or, or like, you, well, as you said, like in every Brown household, the parents are right. There's so many layers to it. Like, oh, that's, yeah, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, it's such a weird thing. I, d I don't know. Like, uh, it's probably a generational thing. It might also be a cultural thing. I think yeah. it's, it, if you kind of look at apologies, they are a form of affection, to be honest, because um, you're kind of showing a really vulnerable side of yourself. And I think if you've been raised in a way where you don't have much affection in the, in the direct sense, because, you know, like in the poem, I, I, I have felt affection for my parents, albeit in different ways. Um, if you're just not, you know, used to that sort of thing, it's hard for you to kind of know to do it as well. Um, yeah, of course. But everybody apologizes in their own way, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Whether it's biryani or, or where it's like a pit stone. Absolutely. Yeah, no um, so are you London based then, presumably? Are you from London? Yeah, yeah. I was uh, born in East London, basically stayed around there. Um, still here, to be honest. Whereabouts? Uh, Don't worry, I'm not going to start Um Roman Road, if you know where that is. Oh, right. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I'm out in East Ham, like, sort of a bit further oh, out. Oh, but... I see. Yeah, not too far oh, cool. at all, because, like, yeah. yeah. Well, it's just gone quarter two, so we're just over halfway through. Time flies, doesn't it? Yeah, um, it really does. <laughs> so, um, off, the, off the chest, obviously, you're doing it digitally for the time being. Um, yeah. Once we sort of get back, is there one place where you'd really, really love to perform? Like, is there a certain festival or a certain city or, or that you'd really, really love to go and do perform at? Yeah. Well, to be honest, right now, I just love to do it in person. <laughs> yeah. I, you just, just anywhere. A bus stop. Anywhere. <laughs> anywhere at all is fine, absolutely. Because it's been so long. And I remember we had, you know, our final in person event back in March 2020 and we were so happy when it happened and like around that time I don't know if you remember like at the beginning of the month you know news had just broken out about Covid and we were looking at the headlines and we were just like oh yeah like you know this will blow over and then the next thing you yeah. know we haven't had an in-person event since so anywhere to be honest anywhere will do. Fair point fair, fair play <laughs> I was just always curious like you know you some people say, oh, I want to do Edinburgh. Or some people would say, oh, I want to yeah. do, I don't know, yeah. New York. Or... No, I'm just curious. But yeah. um, OK, cool. Do you fancy uh, reading another poem? Sure. Um, <clears throat> just changing up the vibe a little bit. Um, cool. This one's called uh, Jerk From Home. Uh, they've only gone and outsourced my boredom to my house. My little house, overcrowded and over the Asian my bedroom is the size of a rice grain, and now it sports a fat monitor right on my desk. There's no longer space for my books, just my work notepads. All my pens are now either black or blue, and when my work is done, I get up from my desk and slip into bed. Centimeters apart, I can't sleep seeing that fat monitor staring down at me like a nosy bastard. Work from home, jerk from home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's when you do yeah when you do absolutely everything in one room or one flat or whatever it's really weird it's really difficult to get your head around in it after a while yeah for sure i you know i've got used to it a little bit now but um before it was just like i need a change of scenery it's like my it was weird when my place of relaxation also became my place of work well that's it yeah, yeah. I think it's hard enough for writers, isn't it? Because, like, you know, you feel like you want to be productive and you, 
you want to write, but then you spend like four hours updating your social media or doing emails or whatever. And like, it's really hard to switch off and to find that like stimulation in it, like creative stimulation. Yeah, absolutely. And I think some things have helped. Like I, I definitely push myself to kind of go on more walks. Obviously not at the moment because it's like snowing so much. And uh, I feel like Bambi on the ice sometimes just waiting to fall over. But yeah, yeah. it's, uh, you know, you can do little things. And I think it's important to kind of realise like you have to work with what you've got. So, yeah. 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 No, it's, 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 it's tough, but we'll get, we'll get there. I don't know about you, Bill, but I've found that online workshops have been amazing. Mm. Like I think online gigs are going to die out as soon as venues are back open, but I hope workshops continue. I think they're great. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, that's such a good point because I've been doing um, some workshops with RG. I don't know if... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Maria told me about them. I want to get involved in them. Absolutely. He's great because he's, uh, he's doing the poetry jam. So it's like a little community of people, like the same faces over and over again. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, he's so he's so knowledgeable. He's opened me up to so many different ways of writing. And I think, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with that. And I definitely agree with the workshop point. Yeah, well, I might, I might see if he'll let me sneak on then. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's cool. Absolutely. Um, great. Well, it's just gone 10 to, so I, I'm just conscious that I don't want to rub it on. Um, if you've got anything that you definitely want to share, all, all board, you know, if you just want to chat, it's whatever you want to do, really. Yeah, I've I've got a couple more poems if you if you want. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be great. Um, so this one was wrote about kind of when we first initially went into lockdown and things got really weird with migrating onto Zoom and kind of pretending like oh things are just things are fine like. We'll still, you know, we'll still socialise and stuff, but, like, we'll do it over this platform. Um, so this one's called My Simulated Friends. Open an app and let me in. It's been so long since I've seen your face. A blur of pixels form an impressionist painting of your likeness and your voice buzzes a familiar hello, mate carried through the black wire of my earphones. Bless the audio video interface that gives me my simulated friends as we quiz each other, as we fool ourselves into accepting that this is real, drunk on a desire to have the true thing, I'll upload you a good time. My phone can't charge and keep my earphones in simultaneously so the quality of your speech is sacrificed to keep our connection alive. I hold you in the palm of my hands, and after months of the same ritual, I become best buddies with my screen, which frames my friendships like an award-winning photographer. I've fallen asleep in the blue light of my laptop, casting over me like the faint luminescence of the moon, and as I dreamed of us hanging out on Zoom, screen sharing our secrets. I eventually woke up to see that my battery had died. So I plugged myself back in and clicked on you. Oh, fantastic. Really, really powerful. Love that. Thank so you. many great lines in there. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> sacrifice yeah. the quality of your voice to uh, keep a connection. That, 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 sorry, I didn't quote it verbatim. Yeah. I love that. Even yeah. like screen sharing our secrets. I just, yeah, that was brilliant. Love that. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's a wild time. I think it's such a wild time <laughs> with everything going on, I think. And we've, we've adapted to it and, you know, we find ways around it. But it, to be fair, you're... poetry, I've said this a few times, like poetry has probably done the best of all the art forms, really. You can't mm. do a gig online if you're in a band. It just doesn't sound good. And like, you know, doing a, I know to be fair, some some plays like I've seen some theatre online that's worked, but poetry, it's yeah, we're quite lucky, really. Um, yeah, no, that is a good point to be honest, because we can do things like this. It's a little bit harder to kind of do if you're like yeah, working in the theatre or like maybe even a musician. Obviously, you can share your music, yeah. but live performances aren't the same. Yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah, I mean, and also, like, that poem was beautiful, so uh, every cloud has a silver lining and all that. <laughs> Thank um, you. Great. Um, did you see, have, have you got another one you want to share? I just, I don't want to take up too much time waffling. Obviously, your, your sure. poetry is great for, 
<laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, uh, can I do like two short ones? You can do whatever uh, you want. Yeah, of course. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, this is another poem about my dad, and it was written during Mapo Remo last year. So, I wrote a poem every day of April. It's called Old Man. I've seen my father cry a handful of times. On those days, it felt like it was raining inside. There was nowhere to hide, nowhere to retreat to. Even in the privacy of my room, I could feel the walls were see-through. Immigrant dads can't afford to show emotion. Households rest on their steady shoulders. Completely functional, useful to society out of sight of their loved ones, sobbing quietly. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I promise I'm not this much of a downer. I don't, <laughs> there's so no. many sad poems I've realised, but... Um, yeah, sad poems are the best poems. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was great. And uh, one last one I'll do... Where is it? Okay, here we go. Done out here. Phrase. Definition. Hopelessness. No prospect of the situation at hand improving. The self-prognosis of a lost soul who has no light at the end of the tunnel. Mired in dark dead ends. Locked up by their own fatalism. A refusal to open up to any notions of things getting better because that same opening up requires vulnerability. Who would want to do that when they feel so fragile? Feelings of the past wrapped up in the present like precious glass. Every day that is survived is in itself an unexpected victory. Surprised that any life force carrying you through things when you drag your heels of pessimism in life's mud. Tired of being tired of being tired. There's no rest for the wicked and there's only wickedness for the rest of us. My guy. I am done out here. <laughs> ah, what a great point to finish with. Love that. Thank you. Thank you. No. I need to make a mental note of working on some things that have, you know, more messages of hope, maybe. I always find it easier to write about sad stuff. I don't know why. I, I think it could... Well, I, I, I would say that a lot of writers are the same. I mean, obviously, that was beautiful and, like, you know... Um, Selena Godden, for example, as the point pessimism yeah. is for life, which has been really popular. But I, don't, I think I don't think I think we always apologise for the bleak ones and the sad ones. But really, like they are quite often the most engaging. And yeah, sad is great, as <laughs> Sophia Bella says. Sad is Thanks, that's Sophia. great. We just we apologise. I think it's weird, especially with like the spoken word scene, because you sort of you want to make people laugh and you want it to be like warm and upbeat. You always apologise yeah. for bringing it down. But, yeah. Like, as an audience member, it's always I'm always happy to hear sad stuff. I know that sounds weird. But... <laughs> Sorry. But, yeah, no, I, like, yeah, they're the things we need to get off our chest. Absolutely. And, you know, that vulnerability is, is, is so important. Um, mm -hmm. As you've said, like, you know, you speak about, you know, uh, um, masculinity and vulnerability, and I think it's really valuable. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, look, um, you were absolutely fantastic. Um, thank you so much for sharing those poems. Um, Losers is out of print at the moment, is that right? Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, it's out of print Excellent. at the moment, um, just because I felt like, you know, it, it had its run and cool. uh, I felt like I wanted to look to the future. Well, yeah, well, watch your space then. Uh, for anybody who doesn't already follow uh, Young Ifty, give him a follow and uh, hopefully I'll get to meet you at a physical event at some point. That sounds <laughs> weird. You know what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> Um, soon, so yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, mate. I really, really appreciate it. It's been lovely to hear you to work your work tonight. Thanks, you too. I'm going to try and catch the rest of that West Ham game that's going on right now. Oh, sorry, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. don't say sorry. Some things are more important. Than oh wow, yeah. <laughs> Come on, you irons. Come on, you irons. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Take Amazing. care. See you later. See ya. Bye. Um, so that was uh, Iftikhar Latif, uh, wonderful poems tonight. Uh, make sure you're back next week. Uh, next week, a wonderful poet, uh, Rashika Wick, is joining us. Um, I'm really excited about that.
Same place, same time, same top quality poetry. My name is Matt Abbott. We are in some fogs. See you later. Come on, you irons. Yeah.